Hello again. Some time ago I did a review of the Tactic TTX 850 I have here. I quite liked it, I thought it was a great deal for the money. However, my curiosity has gotten the better of me, and I was wondering about some of the more technical aspects of the radio. Namely, the latency. Latency is simply how fast a transmitter reacts to stick inputs. To test the latency required a little bit of surgery. I needed to access the 850's internal circuit board, so I opened up the 850's case by removing the six screws in the case and handle. After which the transmitter opens up like a clamshell. Lastly, I unplugged the battery charge connector. This allowed me to connect up an Adreno microcontroller directly to both the transmitter and receiver at the same time. I will use the Adreno to monitor the output of the receiver and trigger the throttle channel of the transmitter at the same time. In this case, the Adreno is connected to the potentiometer on the throttle stick gimbal, which is where I will inject a signal voltage. A micro switch is used to trigger the Adreno to start the latency measuring program. When triggered, the Adreno injects a signal into the throttle channel and then immediately listens on the receiver and for a change in the throttle position. Okay, so here you see a sequence of timings as I continue to press the button. You'll see that the numbers will vary somewhat and this is due to the way the transmitter processes the signal and sends it to the receiver and the receiver has to decode the signal and sometimes it will catch that particular channel near the beginning of the pulse train or near the end and so you're never going to get the exact same number but you will get somewhat around the same relative number in which we'll take a look at those and then we'll average them out. Okay, for some easy math, I took 10 samples of latency measurements, which I wrote down here, resulting in an average latency of 64 milliseconds, which is 64 thousandths of a second. Now, 64 milliseconds isn't terrible, but it did seem a bit high considering how I felt using the radio. So I wondered if I was doing something wrong, and I decided to use Arduino to get a little more details. So after some thought, I reworked the code to give me multiple samples at very fast intervals. This revealed something very interesting. So now I know it looks like a jumble of numbers, but what I've done is I reworked the program so that once it sends out the initial pulse in the transmitter, it'll actually take several time slices uh, until it reaches the final uh, pulse width. So the first number here is the time slice. It doesn't, it's really a relative number. It just picks a time and says, okay, I started at this particular number of milliseconds. And the next number is the pulse width of the receiver pulse going to the servo. So what we have is a time, the servo position, time, servo position, time, servo position, time, servo position. And then we get the final latency number, 63 milliseconds. Now what's really going on here, it's very interesting is, we get the first time hack, basically we start time, and it reads 986. Now that's basically the uh, baseline setting, that's just a low setting. Nothing has changed at this point. Uh, it, the receiver doesn't think the transmitter has sent any, any information other than the, the low stick position, for example. And then it takes another time. Here we got about six milliseconds after the first time, and it hasn't changed at all. And then we've got another uh, few milliseconds. Uh, this looks like about um, uh, 18 milliseconds, and we start seeing a change. Now this is very interesting. So basically at this point, uh, 18 milliseconds later, it's saying, hey, uh, we've now got a new servo position. And then another uh, 20 milliseconds later, we've got basically the final servo position. So what's happening here is, we're telling it to go full deflection. The transmitter is saying, not telling the receiver to go full deflection, it's saying, Go partial deflection, okay, now go full deflection. And this sort of a, a slew rate, I guess, is basically saying, start moving, I'll tell you where your final position is later, uh, it's not important, just, just get moving. And uh, what happens, and what this effectively does is, it lowers your latency because the servo's already moving. Even though it doesn't quite move to the uh, last position yet, as far as the receiver's concerned, it's moving. And when you're moving the sticks, and the stick is, servos are moving in the direction you want to move, that's really all that matters at this point because uh, by the time it gets to the final position, 
your servo is still moving in that direction anyways. This, this is much faster than your servo can move. However, that said, uh, it basically is saying, move, I'll tell you the final destination later, but this has effect of say, having a really low latency time. So instead of having a latency of say 63 milliseconds, we're really talking uh, at the point where we start seeing moving is about uh, 24 milliseconds. If you start, you look at here, and then you look at where it actually starts moving a little bit, we've, we've gone 24 milliseconds. So really that's actually very fast and pretty fast time, especially considering this is a, a budget price radio. I'd say that's really good on the latency measurements. Now admit I'm making a few assumptions in that the transmitter, not the receiver, is the main source of any delays in control response, but I'm pretty confident in my overall measurements. The results place the TTX 850 within the same or better performance as most other name brand transmitters, and I think that's pretty impressive for a budget radio like the 850.